I'm so happy for for Pat for the Kansas City Chiefs uh, organization um, and and really for the city of Kansas City for having this opportunity to have uh, a, a true franchise quarterback here in Kansas City, one that was drafted here, uh, which hasn't happened uh, for almost the duration of the uh, of the Chiefs organization. So, um, uh, and then. I, I think Brett did a phenomenal job of organizing this. Um, and uh, Brett, I've mentioned before, had been instrumental in helping bring Pat to the to the Chiefs. He, I joke that he wore Dorsey and I out about uh, bringing the bringing Pat here, made us watch all the clips of him, and, and said he was the best player he'd ever seen. And and uh, and so that's kind of come to fruition for all of us to witness, uh, like Brett had. Uh, but. Brett's got a, a great crew with him, all of his all of his scouts and guys that work with him. But in this instance, in particular, Chris Shea and, and Brent Tillis, who really, I think, Brent did a phenomenal job of, of organizing the numbers for this and, and the plan, along with Brett, uh, of setting this up. And none of this happens without without Clark Hunt, obviously. Uh, that, that's a that's a bold move. I mean, we we've uh, gone above and, and beyond and found something that is phenomenal for Pat and, and his family and, and also for the Kansas City Chiefs. And Pat was so, so um, aware of, of the surroundings, like he is on everything, of making sure that uh, not only was his deal done, but, but also uh, almost to a T was that, that, that he wanted, he wanted uh, the organization to have an opportunity to be able to bring in players, and and that's a in this day and age uh, that unselfishness is a is a tough thing uh, to find at times. So my hat goes off to him and and his maturity in this whole thing. And and then you know Brett mentioned um, Chris Cabot and the the time that he spent over the last few years here, a couple of years of visiting our building. He was always here and and kind of went above and beyond there to make sure that this all worked for, uh, for Pat and his family and, and also the chiefs. And, and then Lee Steinberg, who's got a tremendous history with quarterbacks in this league, man, it's, it's awesome. So listen, all in all, I think it's a great thing. Very seldom do you come out of a deal and go, you know what? It's a win-win. It's a win for the player. It's also a win for the team, the organization. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm one happy guy. I put on my best Tommy Bahama for all of you today just to celebrate this, man. This is, this is a big day, and it's, it's an awesome thing. And, uh, again, Brett and I just appreciate everything that the Hunts do. We've got a great president in Mark Donovan who, who supports us on everything, too. So it's, you know, it's, a, it's a nice – it's a great, great event here. And I hope everybody has a chance to celebrate it. So – Obviously, a very exciting time for me and me and my family. Uh, I want to give thanks to, to so many people, but always first, I just want to give thanks uh, to, to God for putting me in this situation. I mean, truly an amazing situation where I'm surrounded by a lot of great people, a lot of great players, uh, a, a lot of great just human beings who, who have supported me my entire career so far. And uh, I talked about my family with, with, with Brittany, my mom and dad. Uh, my support team that has kind of been with me the entire way and, and that they still have continued to be with me and treated me the exact same. Uh, I just want to thank them. Uh, the Chiefs organization, like I said earlier, I mean, Coach Reed, uh, Brett Veach, Mark Donovan, Clark Hunt, uh, everybody. I mean, it, it's been a team effort the entire way. And I think that's the special thing about this organization is that, uh, like Veach said, there's trust amongst everybody. Uh, as much as I trust in them, they trust in me. And we were able to go out there and get this contract done the right way that not only gives me the, the security that, I, that I've always wanted, but also uh, allows opportunity for the team to be great around me uh, the entire duration of my career. And I, I, I have full trust that things will get handled, handled the right way as we go throughout this career and that we will be in the, a position to win a lot of football games and hopefully uh, win a lot more championships as, as my career goes on. Um, uh, other people, I want to thank the Chiefs Kingdom. Obviously, their support for me has been has been tremendous since the day I, I got drafted. Uh, the fact that they've kind of been been behind me and supported me has been uh, truly special, and it's a one of a kind thing. And I knew the moment I stepped on the on Arrowhead Field that that they were gonna that this was the place that I wanted to be for my entire career. And I thought I've reiterated that my entire uh, career that I've been here and, and can't wait. 
Um, and then my agents and my support team, I mean, for them to go out and do it, do this contract and do it the right way. Uh, I told them what I wanted uh, from the beginning. They brought me, I mean, different options. They worked hand in hand with the, the Chiefs the entire time. Um, and, and Veach and his team and, and Coach Reed and, and, and all the coaches. And they pretty much just put it out there and to the best way that, like I said, that we could be a, a, great, a great team moving forward and I obviously have the security that I want. Um, it's it's an exciting time. I'm just glad that I get to continue building this this legacy in Kansas City. Uh, obviously, with everything going on in the world with 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 COVID and and all this different stuff, to have this this stuff this this security to go into the community and be able to give back. I, I can't wait to not only build this legacy on the field but off of it. And uh, I'm excited for the future ahead for not only me but the Kansas City Chiefs and the and the communities that have brought me up so far. Nate Taylor. I guess two questions I have. One is for Brett, and then one is for Patrick. Um, for Brett, for you, just how much of this when you alluded to the fact that this was going to be more baseball structure, um, how much of that was designed around the idea of even thinking back in 2018 of trying to figure out the best way possible to create more flexibility for you guys to build around uh, the, the rest of the roster around Patrick. And then for Patrick, given your, your background, and I know you alluded to this in May, the idea of learning how contract negotiations are handled through your father, understanding uh, the baseball historical context of contracts of this magnitude, how much did that give you a perspective as to what you exactly wanted in terms of having long-term security with the organization? I'll jump in there real quick on my end, uh, and I'll let Pat go. Um, you know, his structure was something that was fluid. You know, we had envisioned certainly um, you know, with Pat and, and having the tutelage of Coach Reed, a, a really good player. So um, when we started doing free agent contracts in 18, we did so with the mindset of, of structuring um, those deals to allow for – um, a deal of uh, a franchise quarterback level. Now, the the, the bigger or broader concepts, uh, you know, the, the baseball type contracts was something that, you know, as the 18th season <laughs> went along and as we turned into the 19th season, um, you know, Brant Tillis, that was an ongoing project for him. And he would literally come down to my office in, in the spring of, of last year and talk about, I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about that. Um, hopefully, um, you know, we can, refine these ideas and concepts even more and then when we get to this stage we'll have something to work from and and so a lot of credit to those guys but um this was something that we we talked about different forms of this um and as you know Pat's success continued to climb um we geared more towards this type of concept so um again just a lot of good foresight from the staff that I have working for me to answer your question to me, I would say it definitely played a part. I mean, uh, obviously being able to talk to my dad about it, uh, be able to talk to LaTroy about it, and them going through the process of – they didn't sign that long-term contract, but they saw players who did, and they saw players who went about it and how they kind of got that that long-term security and were able to go out there and play free knowing that they had the security that they, that they had always wanted. Uh, definitely was something that I was able to talk to them about and get a lot of information from them. and. And look, I mean, you can't, I mean, there's no offense, you can't do this with every single organization, but when you have an organization with the, the stability and the culture that, that we have in the, the Chiefs organization, I felt very comfortable and had a lot of trust that I could do, do a contract like this, knowing that we were going to have that same stability by the time I'm at the end of that contract. Seren Petra, go ahead, Seren. For Brett, and, and I'd be interested in Coach Reed as well uh, on this, just if you could kind of, You've said a number of times, you know, uh, maintain the ability to go out and put talent around uh, Patrick, but the, the number is huge, right? Like, what, what are, is there anything you can point to as to how that is, you know, that number doesn't just cancel out the ability to put players around him? And how can you have, you know, what, what, what kind of uncertainty do you have with the COVID environment on what the salary cap's going to be, right? This isn't just a big commitment. It's a commitment not knowing if you're going to have fans in the stands, not knowing if you're going to finish a season, and not knowing what the economic environment's going to be. So how much does that hang over this contract and, and really putting the team together the way you're talking about? It? Well, I think when, you know, you talk about these, you, you know, uh, these aren't common. But when you have a, a structure like this, I think one of the things that's beneficial for us is um, certainty, certainty in regards to what we're dealing with every year. Um, you know, when these things um, don't get worked out and, you know, you're running into the final year of your deal or, you know, there's tags here and there and things go up and then it becomes contentious. I think we're dealing with a known factor now. We know um, where we're going to be. Um, we also know that there's um, 
potentially a tough time ahead of us, and, and none of us know exactly where the cap is going to be next year. Um, we've kind of prepared for that to some degree. Um, but again, until you know exactly where it's going to be, um, you don't have the final numbers. But we're dealing with, um, you know, known numbers, known figures. It prepares us for the future and allows us to plan and prepare every year. And, um, you know, like I said, you know, when you have structure and stability, um, that we believe ultimately is success. And, and, you know, again, this contract, the way it's laid out, it just allows for us to have um, a definitive working number to work from every year. And within this contract, we can do certain things, um, you know, to create cap space. But now we're dealing with something that we know as opposed to the unknown, which is never a good scenario for a team to encounter during an offseason. Ditto what, what uh, Brett just said. So, I mean, he, he covered about every base on it. But I, I will tell you, though, Pat, I, you know, he was very conscious about the, the, the whole – um, situation about being able to keep players. So, I mean, that was in the dialogue there and he made it known to us and um, however we can work that out, uh, we can do it. And then Brett and Brandt and Chris got together and they just masterminded the thing and, and made it work. And, and, um, and so they, they came up with a plan and, and, and presented it to Chris Cabot and, uh, between and Chris had some ideas, and so between them, they they were able to formulate something here. But uh, you know, I I would just say Clark Hunt, uh, who is brilliant, his his you know he's he's got a phenomenal mind, um, uh, in particular with business a uh, business mind. So he uh, he also was able to oversee this and understand it and put in whatever input he had on it, um, and he's more aware of. The COVID situation than anybody being the owner of the football team, and so, um, and he felt comfortable with it when it was all said and done that that we'd be able to um, be able to go forward and still um, be able to sign players even if the cap does uh, decrease a little bit. I will say this too that if the ownership <laughs> thing doesn't work out for Clark, he'd be a great cap guy because it was uh, it's funny how you know we're we're so buttoned up and we've been working on on concepts and ideas for this for multiple years. And again, this deal can go as smoothly as it as it could have gone. But when we did run into a couple different hiccups, it's amazing how quickly Clark had an answer. And, um, you know, it's uh, as coach mentioned, uh, certainly Brent and Chris pulling all the legwork there. But uh, Clark has always has a few tricks up his sleeve and he's extremely, um, you know, we extremely appreciate his uh, oversight on this for sure. Bob Fesco, what was your expectation when the conversations first started about getting a long-term deal done in Kansas City? Like, what did you both kind of have in mind and how did you think it was going to go? I'll let Pat go. I think Coach Reed's already kind of touched on it a little bit. Um, and I, I think I've said it a lot in some press conferences that I, I've had in the past is I, I, obviously I wanted the security to take care of my family and my and my future generations uh, of family, but I also wanted to keep really good football players around me. I mean, I, I'm not going to sit here and, and lie and say that having a great football team around me doesn't help help me when I'm on the field. Um, and so I wanted to find the best way that I could do that. And I feel like uh, as we talked and we, and as like you said, Chris and, and all these guys, Chris, my agent and all these guys talked that, that they came to me with this, this idea and this concept of, of obviously making me financially secure, but having the ability to go out and sign these, re-sign all these guys and like we we're returning 20 or 21 of 22 starters um I knew that this was the way that was going to be the right way to do it where we can accomplish both of those things that are so important to me let's go to Herbie T.O.P. go ahead Herbie hey, hey coach um when I think of great quarterback and head coach tandems Brady Bilicek, uh Breeze Payton Favre Holmgren what does this contract do for you and your coaching shelf life um, when you know you've got Mahomes in Kansas City for the next 12 years and you're going to be in your young 70s. So what, what does this do for you? My young 70s, huh? Uh, listen, Herbie, I, I haven't got to that point mentally where I'm thinking about retirement. I love doing what I'm doing. Um, one of the great things about this job is, is when you look forward to coming to work to deal with the guys, uh, the players, the coaches, and I, I'm lucky enough to be around good players uh, and coaches. And then this guy here, um, it makes it even better. So it's, uh, um, he, he has, a you know, we always talk about the great quarterbacks make everybody around them greater. So 
Um, and, and he has a unique ability to do that with, with his teammates. And um, I, I haven't, I, you know, the honey badger is part of this too. So he, he, uh, he was the first guy that texted myself and Brett when the deal got done was we got a text from, from Tyron and he just said, Hey, what a great thing you did. But they, both those two make our jobs very enjoyable. Um, uh, being able to come to work and have two great leaders like that, um, along with the other guys that, that love to play the game. So listen, I'm, if it takes me into my seventies, let's roll Herbie. Doug got it. I'm ready to go. I'll, I'll second that. The honey badger has texted me like five times. He's messaged me on Instagram and Twitter. Hey, hey, man, dude's, dude's hyped up for sure. <laughs> let's go to Sam McDowell. This is for Brett and Patrick. Uh, I wondered at what point during the, the conversation did the link really settle sort of exclusively on, on, on you know, a longer term? Was it was a shorter term deal like four, five, six years ever discussed? And, and, and what was the motivation or at least what side sort of drove the conversations to, to focus more exclusively on, on something like 10 years. Chris and, and Lee, um, and I don't want to speak for Pat, but just my take on, on this was, you know, they wanted, you know, they had two big ones and that was protection for Pat um, and then surrounding Pat with talent. And, you know, coach and I know as well as anybody that if you, uh, Pat Mahomes is healthy and there's talent around him, it's, it's unstoppable. And so, uh, you know, the, the framework was <clears throat> how can we get him, um, you know, the most in protections and at the same time continually to allow him to have great talent around him. So <clears throat> it kind of started in the longer term um, again. And this goes back to the agents working for the player, Pat being very mature for a young age and understanding that I have a great city, great fan base, great ownership, uh, Hall of Fame head coach going to be hard to beat this um and how can we um put you know how could pat how could we put pat in a position where he is the highest paid player in the game which he is um and on top of that do so in a format that will continue to allow us to you know have talent around him and and so um again i, I give credit to, to their staff of just wanting to do a legacy deal and not just uh, a cash deal. And that's what, what people have to understand. And, and saying that it's easy to say that, um, but you, you have to have a special and, and a unique person like we have in Pat to understand that, Hey, listen, I'm going to make more money than I'll ever know what to do with. And I just, I want to see our organization reward other players. And I want to see, um, you know, myself surrounded with these players like the Badger um, and, and, and Tyreek and all these guys. So, um, you know, I joke with Chris, I said, it's almost impossible to do the biggest contract in sports history and have a player look, you know, unselfish, but somehow Pat again is able to, to do this in a unique way where he's the highest paid player in the game and will be for a long time yet does so in a way that allows us to reward his teammates along the way. Um, it's very unique and I don't think the city, um, should take that for granted. I know they won't. Um, but again, I think uh, back to my opening statement that this this contract in the length speaks to Pat's love and commitment uh, to Kansas City. He wants to win and he wants to do it here in Kansas City. Uh, I'll second it, second that. I mean, he said it, he probably hit it right on the head. I mean, uh, like he said, I went there. I went in there with an open mind. Uh, I went in there with like those two concepts. I wanted to keep great players around me and obviously reward them for being great players and, and support and being a great teammate and everything like that. And I, and I wanted the security that I've always talked about. And I feel like uh, once the, the once these, this concept came to me, I was all aboard. It was all about the details at that point. Um, and I thought uh, the, the Chiefs organization did a great job. And I, I, I had a lot of phone calls with, with Chris and, and Lee and them interrupted a few golf games uh, about every single day. And so, uh, it was, uh, I went in with the open mind and when the concept came to me, I loved the idea and it, and, it, and we've got to, we're able to do it the right way. And I'm excited for the future. And I'm sure a lot's gone through your mind lately, but for you going back to high school and the decision that you made to p pursue your passion of playing football in college, I know you were playing baseball too, but turning down more than a million dollar signing bonus, 
how does it feel now? And have you had a chance to think back of just what it means to you to kind of bet on yourself in that way and win from a financial perspective, but also the message that you can now share just about telling everyone to trust in yourself, follow your passions, all those things that you've preached that you've kind of lived it now. I haven't really reflected on it, I think yet, um, honestly, but I think the, the biggest thing is like you said, that's just how I've always, I've always been built. It's all how I've always thought of myself is just to follow my passions and do whatever I can the best of my ability. And it's something that was instilled, instilled in me by my parents when I was young. And I still believe the same things today. And it's never, it's never been about money to me. Obviously it's, 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 it's awesome. And it's an exciting time for me. Um, but at the same time, I've always just been about being the best person, the best player that I could be every single day. And uh, this is another step, I believe another step in the journey that's just beginning. And I'm just excited that we have this done and I have that security where I can go out there and be the same player that I was uh, and that I, that same person that I was uh, the day I stepped in this league. Let's go to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, Pat, congratulations. Thanks for taking some time. I was wondering, you know, I know that you had been tweeting and you did a couple interviews over the summer watching The Last Dance and Michael Jordan's career and what he was able to accomplish. And you've had one of the most outstanding starts to any NFL career. And I was wondering how much maybe that legacy idea of you want to put together not only a good year or two, but a good 15 years, how much of that went into, okay, even though I'm going to make this really big number, I'm still allowing this organization to surround me with pieces so that maybe I can achieve things that no one else uh, ever has. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it happened even before that. I mean, I think watching the last dance and watching Michael and all the stuff that he did uh, and that, that he's, he's done and all the success he has. Uh, I mean, it's just affirmation. I mean, it's something that I've always believed in those things about the legacy, about um, going out there and being the best player uh, and having the best teammates around me. Um, and it's not, it's not about one person. It's about the team. And I think that's, that's the biggest thing. And I think you see that with our whole entire team, as you see, we have a lot of these guys coming back uh, that want to be a part of this. They want to be a part of this, this culture. They want to be a part of trying to build a dynasty because those things aren't easy to do. And we understand that. So it's going to take a lot of hard work uh, and a lot of dedication. And I feel like we have that with the guys we have in this locker room. Let's go to Therese Paler. Go ahead, Therese. I thought it was really interesting what you said about your godfather and your father. Um, there are certainly some people around the league who did want you to tie the deal to a percentage of the cap. So, but I'm curious exactly what Latroy and your dad told you about why it was so important to build a contract that was beneficial for both sides and wouldn't be a super contentious negotiation. I think the biggest thing that they kind of they preached to me is kind of the same thing that I, I had already thought, and it was it was good just to hear them. Is that you want to have great players around you. You don't want to be a guy that that takes up all the money and then all of a sudden you're you're having to find different guys that will take cheaper deals because I mean you want to those guys need to be rewarded as well it's not it's not about one person and I truly believe that I know the situation that I was brought into and and how good of a situation it was right at the city year behind a great quarterback who taught me a lot then I got to play with a lot of great players the moment I stepped on the football field and so I understand that uh, I have a bigger perspective I guess you would say of, of how to of how to go out there and obviously get the security that I, that I want, but at the same time reward the guys that have helped me be the person that I am and be the player that I am. And I, I feel like with the contract and, and how I, how it was done, I, I feel like I got both of those things is I were going to be able to reward players and keep a lot of these guys around that have built the culture even before I was here. Um, and at the same time, I have the security that I know that my future generations will, will be able to have. Harold Koontz, go ahead, Harold. When you hear that number 503, Three million. I know all of us were kind of astounded when we heard that number. When you hear that and everything you went through, what does that mean to you? And also, you know, how do you push this forward with all your off the field stuff? And how do you, you know, use your name, use your legacy to push everything that goes, everything that you do amazingly off the field as well? Yeah, I think that's the that's the main thing. I mean, obviously, in the time that we are in right now, I mean, there, there's so much opportunity to go out there and try to help the world be, uh, become the best place that it could possibly be. And I feel like uh, having this having this security and this trust within the organization and obviously the financial help i 'll be able to do that and and not and not only uh, in the Kansas City community where I, I hope to impact uh, as much as I can as quickly as I can but uh, hopefully around the world and so um, to have this trust in the organization to be behind me not only on but off the field as well uh, I feel like i 'll be able to make a huge impact in this world uh, in, in many ways and i 'm just excited for the the next step and the, to continue doing whatever I can to, to help achieve that. Steve Walls, go ahead, Steve. This this deal puts you in a league company, not only in football, but in all of sports. In your mind, does that raise the pressure or expectation uh, in your level of play? And can you also, can you walk us through 
when you received the call from Lee or Chris uh, saying that the deal was done? I don't think it raises the pressure, honestly. I mean, I think that's just, to me, the money never the never was the main objective. To me, it's all about going out there and winning football games and, and winning with your teammates and your brothers uh, and the culture that, that you've been a part of. And that's what it was always about. Uh, I mean, last year I felt like I had just as much pressure on myself to go out there and win after falling short in the AFC Championship game the year before. And I feel like going into this next season, I will have the same amount of pressure of going out there and showing that it wasn't a fluke and that we want to go and try to find a way to go back to back, which is so hard to do in the NFL. Um, but uh, it's something where I, I, it's not about the money to me. It's about uh, going out there and, and winning and not only for myself, but, but for the guys around me. And then uh, I, I got the call actually on J- July 4th. Um, and that deal, I mean, there was minor, minor details that still had to get finalized, but, uh, Chris called me and told me that, uh, that the numbers w- were where they were at, uh, obviously y'all have all seen and that we had gotten the guarantee, the guarantees and the guarantee mechanisms that were kind of one of a kind that we haven't seen so far. And that gave me that security. Um, and so I knew that, uh, I knew that once that was in place, that after that, it's just the little details. And so we, we got it. I got that on July 4th and ended up signing sign on July 6th. So uh, it was a, uh, it was a great, great uh, July 4th, seeing the fireworks in the backyard with my family. You said earlier that once this concept came to you, you were all aboard. Why were you so willing to go so many years on a contract rather than sign for a shorter period, maybe see what things look like then? And also, um, are you going to make sure Andy stays around for all 12 of these seasons as well? Yeah, I, I, t- I talked to him, I think, before I signed the deal. And, and he and when he said that he said to y'all, he had no thoughts of even retiring anytime soon. And so, I mean, obviously that's a huge part in it. Uh, I think I'll, having Brett Veach, uh, a, a young general manager who's done – a great job of drafting and getting and putting a lot of great players around me was a definitely another huge, a huge, uh, a boost of confidence of time, this 10 year extension. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there, I think there's positives, uh, to either or contract You sign the short term contract and kind of almost like that, that bet on yourself type thing. But also, I mean, you never know what can happen in this sport. I mean, I think that's the, the biggest thing about football. And, uh, so for me, uh, having the 10 year contract, knowing that, um, I mean, things obviously could happen. The, the economy could boost, but at the same time, I mean, you look at the world that we're in today and, and stuff could happen that way too. So I just, I just, I just wanted to have the security of knowing that I'm going to be a Kansas City Chief for a long time. Uh, I, I'm obviously going to have enough money that I'll be able to help out future generations, my grandkids, their grandkids, and everything like that. Um, and at the same time, I mean, I, I think – I, I did, we did a good job uh, with Chris and, and, and Brett and all those guys of having enough money to pay all the guys around me. And I think that, that was what the huge, the biggest thing of the deal that I loved about it is we're going to be a good football team for a long time. It's about going out there and just executing and finding ways to win. Matt Derrick, go ahead, Matt. You and everybody have been talking about the ability to add talent around you. And Brett referred to the fact that, you know, this at least puts firm numbers and you've got flexibility to make changes later. What is your kind of expectations about whether, you know, this is going to be a firm 10-year deal or you expect to have the team come to you and renegotiate at times to move money around for cap purposes? And how do you, do you feel like this gives you an opportunity to put a voice into who's around you on the team? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of leave that to uh, Veach and Coach Reed for the most part uh, I mean, of them. They've done a great job of building great teams wherever they were. Uh, if that was in Philly or if that was uh, in Kansas City, they built great teams and picked the right players. So, I mean, obviously they come to me sometimes and ask me a few questions here and there, and I, I give my input, but that all comes down to, to them pulling the trigger and, and getting the right guys. And so, um, obviously with, with the deal and how, we, how it was structured, I'll have a lot of room to, to move money around and, get, and keep great teams around. Um, and I've seen – you've seen a lot of great quarterbacks do that in the recent years with – with uh, Rodgers and Stafford and all these guys who, who do these different type of things. And I wanted to have that flexibility to do that because you want to, like I said, you want to have a great team. You don't want to, uh, you want to be in the playoffs every year. You want to be competing for championships. And, and that's my goal. And so having that flexibility will be, will be key to having success and uh, year in and year out.